Greetings, Cosmeteers, and welcome back to the Dapper 2 and the Scarab, the freshly painted Dapper 2, I might add, which is currently mining some Hyperium, which uh, is a little bit ironic, considering a fish pointed out in the comments that uh, I forgot to put the Hyperdrum drives back on the tap. Don't worry, we will get to that in a little while. It's probably going to be spending most of its time stationary while I build with it in this episode anyway, so it's not too much of a concern. But what do you think about the paint job? I'm actually really, really happy with this. I must confess, I am experimenting using black as the topmost decal and just using the fades to create the illusion of shadows, which in turn creates the illusion of depth. For example, the bridge is now, uh, you know, visually the highest point on the ship. It's proud of the rest of the ship and, and the kind of cargo bays are sunk down into the surface. We've got this like large deck area with multiple levels. I really, really like it. I think we're going to be uh, going with this moving forward. But obviously I received so much good uh, good advice and uh, suggestions and also pointing out little things I'd missed in the, the last episode. My apologies if it sounded a little bit disjointed, by the way. It's because my brain felt a little bit disjointed. The noise was thunderous outside my office. Thankfully, the work crews have either finished with what they're doing or they have uh, broken for the weekend, so I'm going to have a couple of days of, of peace. Uh, fingers crossed, regardless, but uh, hopefully they are done with their work and we're not going to get any more interruptions like that. But, uh, yes, we have received a, a decent amount of advice regarding the Dapper 2. And one of the ones that, that stood out the most was by Rui, who suggested swapping the capacitors here for reactors. And my initial kickback reaction was like, well, no, I can't afford it. And then I, I took pause for a moment and was like, hang on a second. Yes, yes, I can. In the beginning of the game, I was really gated by fissiles and also worry about explosiveness. The Dapper 2 shouldn't have to worry about explosions anyway. It's not going to be in combat scenarios. Or ideally, I know that's, you know, kind of very, uh, very idealistic of me and it's kind of famous last wordsy in a way. You know, you plan for, you hope for the best, but plan for the worst. And we're definitely not planning for the worst if we put reactors all on the outside. But nevertheless, especially in the long trips, it makes sense to swap these out for reactors now. I'm really not gated. That would also mean that I could get rid of the hole of roll completely and just have suppliers and porters, which would, again, make the Dapper 2 really, really functional. But as I mentioned, we're not going to be doing building with the Dapper 2, at least not right now. We did a lot of building in the last episode. However, that same advice would be especially useful in the Scarab, which as we've seen, starts to suffer with energy for its ion beams. That really can't be allowed to stand. These are critically important systems. I can't have them going down in any prolonged fight. So let's pop down at least regular reactors. This will take a little bit of strain off the, the main reactor, or rather, it will take strain off the crew having to load these reactors. So now I can go ahead and I can remove that. These will supply energy themselves. Hopefully that will be good enough We'll see, but uh, at the very least, I'm, I'm hopeful that this is going to solve that problem, or at least kick the can far enough down the road that we're not going to have to worry about it for the next couple of episodes. Because, again, it is high time. Hello, uh, Thrasher of the... I'm not actually sure about the factions, but you're at the very least not an enemy, so I don't mind. But uh, we're going to be focusing on building some new ships. I have gotten everything ready. I have lit the sacred incense. I have oiled my beard just the way the Omnisai likes it. I've got a cup of Lapsang Sushong. The smoky aroma really helps to stir the creativity. Don't don't say that to the Mechanicus. They, they're not big on creativity. They're much more about dogma. Well, I mean, certain mechanic. The best Mechanicus are okay with creativity. Scavela is bay, and I will die on that hill. Now, for this... We are going to start off in perhaps a non-intuitive way. I'm going to just draw out a long line of scaffolds, and then I'm going to put an explosive charge on the end. Now, I did briefly touch on this as I was asked, how do you get other ships? My preferred way is, is capturing them. There's something poetic about using your enemy's weapons to kill them with. Nevertheless, if you uh, want to create your own ship or... And I am, this is hypothetical, though someone in the comments could probably confirm for me. I imagine you could use this method to create a carrier of sorts, not as much of a carrier, since you wouldn't be able to redock 
but sort of like a drone factory. You could have a large ship with a bay that is just uh, gantries of pre-built ships that you could then detach. And uh, what I mean by detach is once I've created a space that someone is going to be able to get into, uh, namely this, uh, oh, actually, let's uh, pop that somewhere else then, since that isn't going to give me a door. Uh, let's pop it over here. There we go. Once we've got this uh, little area, I'm going to detach it from the main ship, and that should sort everything out. Now, adding in these reactors is going to cost me a couple of fissiles. We're fine with that. The processes are probably the, the, the lion's uh, share of the cockpit here, and yeah, that's what's using up the, the, raw, uh, the raw sulfur. But let's go ahead, make it so. Done and done. Come out of build mode. Always remember to come out of build mode. I forget to come out of build mode so often. And then you just click on explode charge. Pop. There we go. We now have, effectively, two ships. Uh, now, this is what I was uh, going to say, because we're going to uh, have someone move across here and, and man this ship. And the way you do that is you go in here, go to transfer crew. You select the ship, which currently has the same name. Don't worry, we'll change that immediately. And we initiate the transfer. As soon as someone gets over there, this ship will effectively be its own ship at that point. And we can do things like immediately rename it so it's not as confusing. But uh, this is now, I do believe, our ship. There we go. So let's edit the ship name first and foremost. So this will be the DPR3. And on that point, let me just quickly scope out the other ship. Yeah, there we go. All right. I'm very sorry. Uh, quite a few people have been a little bit perturbed by the fact that this wasn't the same. It had a hyphen. It's because of the painting. Um, sometimes when I'm painting, I'll find that I've got too large of a space to put the, the words into, so a hyphen can help me fill out the space, and I probably named it at, uh, around a time that I was using the hyphen naming system on the paint job, so, uh, I apologize for the inconsistency there, I realize it does make some people's brains itch. Uh, nevertheless, there we go, and we are now going to grab all of these things back in. But what I meant about a carrier, this is now a, an independent ship, which is fine for us. But if we go back into the Scarab, you'll notice that I can repair this back out there. So if you were to design the ship entirely attached to it, uh, like a mothership, then all you'd need to do is repair it to rebuild these ships and send them out again if they get destroyed. It's going to be an, uh, that would be a very interesting design. Uh, it's not going to be what we're doing here, though, at least not for right now. Let's uh, just dig that back because I'm going to be building a diagonal ship. And a diagonal ship is going to require uh, a bit more work than uh, I know what to do with uh, so far. I've not built a diagonal ship up to now. But the reason why I wanted to, to have this as, a, as an independent ship before I tried is so that I can change the orientation of what this ship considers forward. If we look down here, we should be able to find flight direction. So I'm going to say the flight direction should be a diagonal. Now, I am told... In the comp, there we go. You notice how the building field has now aligned with what I have said is is forward. And by the same token, if you ever find that for some reason you've built the ship the wrong way, or you've built a ship that that always wants to keep distance. Honestly, uh, this was pointed out in the comments, and I thought oh, that's quite a clever way to solve the problem. If you build your ship with its you know very large forward thrusters, and then build the weapons system pointing backwards, you can then uh, or, or indeed uh, the weapon system paint pointing forward right now but then you change your mind and you end up giving it very powerful reverse thrusters you can just go in here and say hey I would like you to fly backwards from now on and just by going in here flight direction pointing it that way and now if I were to go into build mode on the scarab it would point in that direction a little little detail but a really really super useful one in my opinion but we are going to be working on this ship now the first question what kind of ship are we making and Blood Feud suggested that the next ship should focus on disabling enemy ship systems. I couldn't agree more. And since Balthazar had brought up disruptors, I think that's the best way to go with it. Uh, to recap what a disruptor is, a disruptor fires bolts of electrical energy that deal little damage but can short-circuit enemy systems, causing them to lose power, can penetrate shields whilst draining them. 
Now, to give you some uh, more information on this, uh, what I specifically want to see is rate of fire is two shots a second. Shield penetration is two shields. It can go through two shields at a time. Firing arc 200 degrees. Turret speed is reasonable. The speed of the bolt is not particularly fast. Power use is 0.25 per shot. So it uses up half of a charge per second of firing. So that's very, very useful. Now, one sad thing about this is there is no configuration of this ship that we're going to be able to build with that bridge is going to be pointing in the direction I want it to go. And it's just something we're going to have to live with. But I'm thinking we're going to go with a smaller ship design. Uh, actually, one of the things I, I would like to do, let's move this Scarab forward a little bit. Let's uh, scoot you out of the way, please, Scarab. Is there anything else around here that I could have the Dapper 2 going? Uh, well, actually, I should probably keep the Dapper 2 quite close by. Uh, but that's not going to be something that we're going to be able to play around with, sadly. Let's go into design mode, though. First and foremost, I want to build the weapon systems. That is going to be everything that the ship is built around. So, reactor-wise, can I have the door out? I can. That's marvellous. So, we could either have the weapons a little bit further back. Gives me more room for armour. Do I want it to be a scrapper or just something that deploys from behind the scarab? I'm favouring the idea of behind the scarab for now. So let's set up these weapon systems. We've got their arcs of fire now. Uh, pretty much, I could build this entire nose cone out of armour and it would not be any problem for me. Now, as a fighter, I possibly don't want this much armour because it's going to slow it down. But... It might not be the worst thing ever. Let's uh, get something like that. And then we could have just a little square there to give us forward facing. Uh, I could, as was mentioned, have a, a bit of an internal gap there. Just so if uh, disruptor bolts hit, they're going to be... Uh, they're going to, not going to be able to propagate through the armor as easily. Does I actually mention it on the disruptors themselves? Uh, how they propagate through armor? Uh, damage drain on hit, damage versus shields, uh, penetration resistance, uh, no, it doesn't really mention it specifically, that's a bit of a shame, but that's fine. Uh, right, we're going to want our crew quarters probably straight off the small reactor itself. How many people run these? We are going to need a crew of, crew complement one, so two regular bunks would cover everything needed here and a little bit besides for running the engines but let's move these up a little bit so i've got a little bit of room down here because again engines something that i hadn't actually factored in yet let's uh shimmy these out a little bit let's get some standard thrusters up the front here and here just running straight off the reactor I think that would be fine. And in fact, at this point, I think I'll do away with that little bit of uh, armor um, armor spacing there. Let's pop that back in. Uh, something like that would do. Yep, sure, that gives us a nice little weave there. Now, that does mean if I pop the cockpit here, I'm not going to be able to get out to the point fence along the sides. Is that the worst You know what? I think we'll do away with the point defense. We're just going to go purely in. We're going to have this uh, this fight to have a very, very specific purpose, I think. So let's get rid of all of that. We do need the bunks, though. And I think uh, maybe, well, it, it might be a little bit much. Uh, maybe going for, for six uh, a uh, crew quarters, so we'd have uh, six beds, will be useful. I'm going to have to add some uh, additional armor out the sides there. But down here, we can now have... Well, we could even have an engine room if I really... Do I want an engine room on this? That being said, it does actually dramatically cut down on the amount of carrying uh, resources to all the different thrusters if we end up with a lot of them. So if I can afford it, it's not the worst idea. Uh, so if we were to have an engine room right there, and that would give me a little space then to pop in the uh, the way for crew to get on. We could have some more thrusters down here, maybe make this a very fast ship. Something along these lines, perhaps, with some additional thrust. Oh, actually, let's uh, shimmy these down a little bit. 
as that will allow me to pop an additional thruster facing up for course correction. Either that or I could tuck in another thruster around here, which would also help out. Uh, so something like that. That gives us a lot of forward propulsion. It gives us a, 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 a little bit of uh, turning because obviously all of these are aiming off in different directions so they'll be able to pulse in, in different ways in order to give us uh, give us movement. But that means that we don't need doors here, here or indeed any kind of access along here and uh, all that remains now is to slap in some armor. Should I have any cargo space on this? Mm, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. This is, this is purely a weapons platform. It exists to uh, to support the scarab. Right, give me a few moments to slap on some armor and I will bring you back to the finished product. Okay, there we go. I actually quite like the shape of it, I must confess. Uh, I, I, ca I can see the appeal of building diagonally at this point. You can get some really, really nice shapes. It's a modest cost to build this. Uh, let's go ahead and get that together. In fact, I could build two of them at this point. So we might need to uh, save the design here and then use it to build another ship. Now, one thing I immediately realize uh, upon review is that I have absolutely no way to put out fires. That is probably an oversight. So let me just stick in a fire extinguisher right next to the bridge. It reduces the bridge armor a little bit. But, um, alternatively, I could pop one down here. But again, I'm hopeful that this is not going to end up in fact, you know, I'll put one down there anyway in the kind of opposite. Uh, but I'm hopeful that this is not going to end up in any any kind of uh, in the crosshairs of any of our enemies. So there we go. Our, our ship is ready. Let's have a look at what it looks like outside. Quite plain at the moment. And the bridge does face the wrong way. I know. Tragic, really. Could I make that a little bit better? I could at the sacrifice of this fire station. Ah, uh, fine. Fine. Look, we need the aesthetics. They have to be... There we go. Pop that in. Four before function. Uh, there we are. We don't need the uh, extra door, though. But that should be everything we need to get this going. We don't need that door. This one can go build straight off the reactor. The only the only slight inefficiency, inefficiency is the fact that you're going to have to walk through a corridor in order to load this. But uh, that should be fine. Oh, one thing I didn't consider, actually in putting in that uh, that bridge, the engine room. This requires a crew call, oh, required is two. So two, four, six. Okay, so that just leaves one for loading all of the power on the ship. They're gonna be a very busy person, let's be honest. Um, I probably would have preferred, preferred more, but uh, we could possibly squeeze in an extra bunk later. But let's uh, make that so. There we go, our ship is ready and there we go the fighter crew role is very specifically for this ship uh in order of priority we've got a 10 on the fire extinguisher a 10 on the cockpit operating the engine room is a nine and supplying it is an eight supplying the thrusters is a seven and then operating the disruptor is an eight and supplying it is a seven as well so that's going to give more priority to uh keeping the ship mobile and active than it is to uh, keeping the weapon systems armed and that is definitely something that we can look at sorting in the future you are never going to be bored you are going to have work to do forever i can easily see us needing more crew for that role frankly but uh, we're gonna test out our new ship nevertheless so we've got a it, it was meant to be a small fighter ship but it's ended up big either that or the scarab really isn't as big as i thought it was regardless let's see what its top speed is it's up to 95 not terribly bad not terribly bad and it can uh, turn around pretty sharpish i like it so that should afford a decent amount of uh, support for the scarab now i can take this out by itself Alternatively, I can give it a twin. And really, when I was designing this, I was thinking along the lines of it having two. So, as much as that's going to pull away from my crew compliment, let's get a second one going. Okay, now the way we're going to do this, uh, this is the first time I've tried it. Uh, I believe we can just go in here. Ship design, my ships, the DPR-3. 
I guess we could just call it the DPR3 or Fighter. Let's just go with Fighter for now. There we are. There we go. So with that done, uh, let's just scooch the uh, Dapper one forward a little bit. And we should be able to simply come in here and uh, maybe go in, in here. Can I load from here in some capacity? Load ship replacing existing. Paste into existing. Yeah, load ship. There we go. Replace existing fighter. Load ship. And make it so. Once the autosave is done. There we are. Nice and simple. Fantastic. And with that, we need to transfer some more crew. I do apologize, Dapper2. I know, you're, you're hemorrhaging crew at an alarming rate. But I have eaten into our copper uh, production rather, rather egregiously. So uh, we're going to need to get over here and start uh, getting some more coils made. But while all of that's going on, how about we set up a formation for our fighters, Dapper3, just within weapons range on that side. Dapper four, uh, we need you to be a little bit closer, a little bit closer again, just within weapons range on this side, perfect, grab the group, we are going to want to save this as a custom formation if indeed we can, uh, we'll pop that in A, and there we are, we've now got our little formation. So, I think whilst uh, Dapper 2 is busy grabbing some bits and bobs and replacing our uh, rather <laughs> diminished coil supply, ready to upgrade. We're going to head out and we're going to cause some trouble. We've got a fugitive bounty down here, so let's get over there and have a fight. All right, we are nearing our destination. You know, let's try out some of the other... Oh, actually, that brings them in quite close, which is uh, a little bit nicer than the uh, much further out there formation I had previously. Now, one of the things I want to do here is obviously test out our new ships. Why are you... Oh, damn, before, did I never, t I never, t <laughs> I just assumed that would be copied over. My bad, I am sorry, I was, I was insisting that you fly at a wonky angle. That, that was, that is on me, that is not a you problem, that is a me problem. <laughs> I apologize, Dapper for. Right, okay, at this point though, I do want you to break formation. And I would like the Dapper 2 to get the attention of the cutthroat. Uh, okay, well it's not, not a particularly, uh, impressive uh, attack craft. I don't think we're going to have too much of, a tro uh, of problems, though the disruptor is a little bit of a, of a worry. So I'm going to allow the Dapper 2 to take out that corridor and thereby hopefully straight through that disruptor. Uh, otherwise it'll aim for the center of mass on the disruptor and that goes through quite a lot of other things. And this is really more of a combat test for the support craft. So let's fly over here. I'm maybe being a little bit uh, too aggressive with my positioning here. It might not give them enough time for the Dapper 2 to grab the attention. Uh, no, it has definitely got the attention. Okay, well, in that case, that's just getting close and personal then. Now, what I, what I like you to do... On this side, that's got a bunch of uh, point defense. Don't really like that. It's also got cannons. Really don't like that. But I would very much like to take out its thrust and rotation ability. Uh, so, in a way, actually, how about we just try and get right behind, take out these thrusters and the cockpit. Now, we're going to want to do that from the back, so, uh, generally speaking, can I give you a... Oh, I'm sorry, I had the whole thing selected like that. That's not what you want. You want just the, the basic ship selected. Otherwise, you're giving it very, very weird orders. Uh, right, so, thrusters and then the cockpit. But I would like you to engage from a little bit... Uh, closer about there, I would say. And let's make sure that you're facing the target at all times. There we go. That will do. Uh, likewise with you, I would like you to fly up close. Take out this thruster, this thruster, and the cockpit. Uh, once again, want you to be fairly close. But you can be a little bit more to the side this time. Simply because we're not going to have to worry about the point defense. So the point defense are going to be a little bit of a concern, uh, I suppose. Uh, so maybe... I should have the Dapper 4 deal with those on the way past. In fact, yeah, let's uh, let's queue those up and then go through these. I've already given you your engagement range, and that's the main thing. Now I'm going to slow this down because, again, 
Very new to uh, fleet controls, but that is doing exactly what I wanted to do. Fantastic. You have popped the primary target. You can stop firing the ion beam now. But I'm going to let this have the rest of its weapon systems for now. It's going to be able to catch up to the Dapper 2. Uh, sorry, Dapper 1. I do apologize. The Scarab. Now, the thing with this... Oh, we're already engaging. Fantastic. Where are they going? They sort of are hitting. Yes. Nice. Hopefully, we're going to see them be effectively completely shut down. Now, I don't really mind. I can see someone loading it with energy, so I suspect... The, yeah, the, the cannon, you can see that little orange glow? No longer there on this one. It has been completely drained of power. So, I'm going to say, from its current position, it no longer needs to worry about that one. Uh, aim for these two and then the thrusters and get through. Now, the only problem is, I realize, that I really have only really, only set this up for disabling. I have not set it up in any way to actually take anything out. I mean, the ion bolts will eventually do it, but they're very, very slow at it. They're more for shutting a system down rather than, uh, than, than breaking it. So I'm thinking we might, in fact, want to give it some other weapon systems. Maybe a laser and an ion for some precision strike capabilities. Uh, let's have you go here. And then for the cockpit. If you can take out the cockpit, you basically blind them so we don't have to worry. We're coming in close, though. Our weapon system is out of power there, sadly. Are we going to be too close, though? Are they going to be able to engage? Or are they set not to engage? They might not actually be set to attack enemies. Well, given that, then, we can just sit behind and uh, go for their thrusters only. So, uh, yeah, just go for these. But at this point, the Dapper 4... Yeah, they're, they're so focused on loading up the uh, the engines that we're not really getting anything else happening. However, we have shut down their cockpit. They're now spinning out of control. They can't do anything. And that's more or less it for them, I would imagine. The cockpit is back online, so they, they've finished their spin. Unfortunately, we weren't that fast to uh, reposition following that, so uh, that didn't really help us too much, if I'm perfectly honest. Uh, let's try and get back down there. But yeah, I'm definitely seeing that we are going to need something other than just a disruptor. We're definitely going to want more than just the disruptors on these vessels. That being said, once you've got access to the uh, cockpit, you can pretty much just focus it, I suppose. Um, and for you, let's reposition you to about there. Sure. Let's uh, keep pressure on the cockpit for now. But I'm thinking swapping one of these out for a regular laser would probably be helpful. In addition to that, we are definitely going to need... Uh, we've got enough power, we just don't have enough manpower to get that power where it needs to be. And that is a shame. Uh, a crying shame. Maybe a, a bunk over here. Just so someone can get down there and, and load things up. I think that would probably be good enough. Uh, but at this stage, we've pretty much got this ship completely locked down. We've done a minimum of damage to it. And I think we're about to pop the cockpit at this point. You could take out all of the weapon systems, all of the thrusters, if you really wanted to keep the cockpit um, intact. And that is definitely something we could do for the sake of stripping this apart. Um, because the cockpit obviously has processes in it. But that was an interesting first test. Definitely highlights some inefficiencies, some rather glaring inefficiencies, if I'm honest, and that we can work on. Also, we've uh, discovered something else down here. Let's uh, go and have a quick peek. What are you? You are a uranium asteroid. Very nice. We'll bring the DAP2 over to collect that. I've been trying to pick up any uranium uh, carbon and uh, try steel even before I could use it. Just so that we could uh, start building up a supply. I imagine you're done with all of the copper. Yes, indeed you are. Okay, well, let's get over here. Grab that uranium. Then I'm going to send Dapper 1 and the two fighters out to do a little bit more, more uh, combat. We're not going to be running it as slowly there. But I definitely think before we do, I'm going to swap out one of the, uh, of the disruptors for just a regular laser weapon. I think that makes a lot of sense. So bring it back in a few seconds. Okay. We're over at the station. I've uh, just sold a bit of excess hypercalls and processes to give us some money to play with. Because it is very clear after that first test, we need a redesign. Like, a really quite badly need a redesign. 
Now, chief amongst them, obviously, I want to give this ship uh, enough uh, punch to be able to actually disable systems. Not just disruptors, but actual uh, lasers as well. Now, we could go with cannons, but I think this adding the complexity of needing extra storage, not exactly what we want to do. Secondly, I don't think the engine room on a, on a fighter makes sense. It was funny, and I do love the idea of getting extra bang for buck, but I think... Uh, the extra staff to load power would be more important to us, ultimately. Though that being said, if I did get rid of this and then replaced two new weapons, we would still be in the same place. We would still need more crew. So the crew complement thing might just be something we're going to have to accept. But uh, once we've got the, the suppliers around here, then they'll be able to run supply between our... Uh, our weapon system but for now i think getting rid of the engine room is more or less a must now do we keep the the much larger thrusters that is a bigger question i think for this ship going with less big thrusters and smaller thrusters to give us faster responsive maneuverability is more important so with that said let's make a couple of of we changes first and foremost this doesn't really need to be anywhere it's just where people get onto the ship from i may as well pop it over here i'm not super keen on having my cockpit that exposed though i'm gonna be honest so let's uh move out the armor a little bit have i got mirror i do have mirror mode on ah mirror mode reacts very interestingly to uh, diagonal ships it is it has got to be said uh but let's pop a little bit of extra armor on these sides just to give the cockpit that just a little bit more more uh, protection there now as for thrusters i don't want them to be very far from the uh the reactor obviously but we could always have a capacitor down here i know we just got away from using capacitors elsewhere but that might not be a terrible idea to have a little capacitor just kind of squeezed in there so that while we're not fighting that's being loaded and then afterwards the uh, lion's share of uh, the power is drawn from the capacitor for maneuverability in fact that allows me to shift you about a little bit as well which will then allow me to put a uh, slightly higher health armor piece around the cockpit there we go that that will do reasonably i'm going to say now again because capacitors don't explode quite as big they still do explode uh, from what i understand but not quite as uh, aggressively that does also mean that we can afford to pop a little bit more protection around here in fact sure let, let's do this instead let's have uh, that shaped like that it actually gives a nice little fin around our thrusters now i i kind of feel that like getting more maneuvering thrusters would be useful also, you know, replacing the one that we just lost, but maybe not right now. Maybe instead focusing uh, on this for the time. <laughs> wow, what on earth has it done? <laughs> Mirror mode, you really are a troll. <laughs> just, just straight up a troll. But I think we need to change the armor a little bit anyway, uh, simply because it's quite heavy. And additionally, I'm hopeful that this this ship isn't going to be under attack too often. I know, again, you know, I should be planning for the worst, not the best, but uh, here we are planning for the best all the same. I am a hopeless optimist, apparently. Uh, there we go. That should give us everything we need. We need to make sure that they can actually get in there. But that should give us enough uh, access to both weapon systems. One disruptor, one laser. I could just go dual laser. Is there a point in having disruptors on this ship? Let's actually have a look at the stats. So a laser uh, rate of fire is 1.33 shots a second. Power use is only 0 0.2. So it only uses 0 0.27 energy every second. Uh, rate to fire is 1.33. Damage is 400 a shot. Okay, so if we're not fighting shielded opponents, I think I got very uh, attracted to the idea of the disruptor. But it's not fit for purpose on this ship. I think it would be better for us to have two uh, two lasers rather than two disruptors or even one disruptor on this vessel. 
Yeah, I, th I think I think I got got a little bit too uh, excited with the idea of having a disruptor, and we're we're going to dial that back. It is never too late to to change your mind, to adapt to to fresh tactical information. That should do. It's a bit of a tighter spread, but maybe this this will work. We're going to have to load them with energy far less frequently. Done away with the cockpit. So now our six crew, one, two, three, that leaves us three crew to actually load. And I don't think we need three. I think we could do with just two. So it would give us the opportunity to shift a bit. We'll actually get a load of stuff back from this well. Um, okay, well, let me get the Dapper 2 to hoover all of that up, please, and thanks. Dapper 2, could you collect? Thanking you. And given that... I guess the Dapper 2 can have one, one of the crew back. Uh, let's send one crew member across. <laughs> I'm so sorry. The Dapper 2 has been struggling. Uh, though, I will say the Dapper 2 has actually uh, gotten... Oh, the wrong ship. Uh, the Dapper 2 has updated its uh, reactor design. One reactor is all we need down here. Having two would be excessive. Two uh, capacitors was useful because it gave us that much more power before it would start to drain. But uh, one right now is okay. I think we are safe to keep these because these are more maneuvering thrusters rather than uh, main propulsion. These are as well, I guess. Um, but uh, I've basically tightened the, the roles. We've now got energy supplies, porters, and operators. We no longer have energy haulers, and the energy suppliers are now also responsible for loading energy into their designated capacitors, and that seems to do okay. It has made our uh, our fighter a little bit more stubby, but if I'm perfectly honest, that kind of gels a little bit better for me with the idea of a fighter. So we're going to uh, test out this design. I think for the time being, we're going to keep both of them and see which one does better. But we've now got the Dapper 3 over here, with a uh, a revised look which will hopefully allow these ships to perform a little bit better let's have a look at how they move the dapper three definitely seems to be a little bit more nimble now oh a, 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 a lot that are you drunk dapper three dapper three uh we can overlook that i'm just gonna put it down to to new ship excitement Okay, we are now approaching our target. The uh, two fighters are easily keeping pace with the Scarab. Uh, I, I was preparing that last action for editing. My God, how m If there was a drinking game on how many times I called the Dapper 1, the Dapper 2, I'm fairly certain most of my viewers would either be dead or facing a life of liver troubles. My goodness, I do apologize. Uh, but I did make a very slight revision. Um, I went for one, uh, or rather two smaller thrusters just for that zero second reaction time. I think that would be a little bit better for us, as I think part of the problem that, uh, that the, uh, Dapper 3 had in interacting with the Dapper 4 is that all of its course correction is one second delayed. Now, I remember how bad a one second delay on any kind of critical reaction speed was when I was playing Starbase and all of my, uh, my coding had a one second tick timer that was dreadful so i can only imagine that's the case here Ooh, this is a prime candidate for just picking off the cockpit okay this is going to be a test between these two ships dapper two uh ah, that, sorry drink uh, scarab i'm gonna have to just call you scarab uh i would like you to get involved but i do not want you to actually engage you have got or should have plenty of ammo yeah you've got loads of ammo we are not struggling for that and i want the two fighters out to the side i'm gonna have to think of a way of addressing you both without calling you the two fighters it almost sounds uh uh sounds uh kind of disrespectful really right okay we're in position i want you to get around and engage from the back about here we're gonna have both of you move in simply put actually you know what can i tell you to stop targeting yes i can i would like you to move in behind and i would like to tell your weapon systems not to engage until i tell you to now what i would like to see this is purely going to be a test of how maneuverable these ships are 
Let's also make sure that you're facing your target. There we are. Are you going to be facing your target? No. They don't really... Right, there we go. Let's make sure that they both get in close enough that their accuracy is not going to be an issue. There we are. Uh, you as well. I want both of your weapon systems to be... Uh, to only target when I give you something directly to attack. Right, let's uh, slow things down. Again, this is going to be a bit of a, a bit of a, a test. Okay, you are straight under attack. Let's veer off a bit. In fact, can we strafe? Uh, well, I could, I guess, strafe. Turn to face the target, then strafe this way. No, nah, that really won't work. The strafe seems to only care about the way I'm currently facing. Uh, likewise, going to need you to stay well out of range and you as well go 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 you're gonna take a little bit of uh, punishment for that i'm afraid yeah how much armor damage not really that much actually considering uh that was a lot better than i was expecting right what you nice and close behind maybe i was a bit too aggressive in sending you guys in already and that is uh, my fault if so Let's uh, have you get in behind. Make sure you're facing your target. Th please and thank you. Same with you. Face the target. Now, I was assuming that the, the Dapper 2 would already have the Renegade's attention. It does seem to. So far. Now, obviously, the, uh, the Dapper 3 doesn't have a massive engine room. And effectively, this has got one extra uh, standard and one extra large thruster. It is going to be by far the faster ship by far dapper 3 is struggling to even get there right now so maybe maybe the engine room was required uh, certainly does seem to be a, a bit of a problem for the uh, dapper 3 currently to to try and keep up all right well given that i guess you can now engage the cockpit it should be a relatively easy uh, win for you. You're going to be able to drain it of power long before you need to destroy it. There, it's already shut down. The ship will now allow our uh, Dapper 3 to get in. So maybe maybe their engine room wasn't a terrible idea after all. Just for uh, an extra two peeps, they were able to easily keep pace with uh, this vessel. And you've already taken out the uh, the cockpit okay well in this particular case that was pretty much cut and dry in this engagement it really did come down to just destroying the, the the cockpit perhaps just swapping out the weapon systems would be enough okay there we go uh the redesign is simple enough we've just popped in two lasers and i've smartened up the armor a little bit gave a little bit more armor along the sides specifically because of the bridge section there and that should be good enough we are slowly getting this done through an iterative design process my favorite design process okay there's our target however you guys need to steer well clear of this one let the scarab grab all of the attention and the scarab can just deal with it this is going to be a relatively easy opponent so the scarab doesn't even need to worry all right let's get in around behind ideally away from those dangerous cannons and uh oh do you have missiles hang on a second yes yes you do well that might be a little bit more of a worry then if i'm perfectly honest uh but let's get our two ships out here dapper four let's get you about there where are we going to try and punch through the cockpit is over on this side so perhaps we should have both ships try and deal with it though honestly i think getting rid of the uh, the missile system is probably a big enough concern so let's let you get into position the scarab should easily be able to handle all of this ordinance now let's have a watch of these ships and how well they can maneuver i strongly suspect oh did i not tell you ah ha ha i have not told you actually because these are new weapons let me uh, switch those to only engage on things I've told them to. But so far, the thruster arrangement on the Dapper 4 is is king in these engagements. Let's uh, get you properly positioned about there. Make sure that you're facing. Let's see if you can destroy 
the crew quarters in the same sort of time. But I'm, I'm strongly feeling now that the uh, Dapper 4 is just the faster ship. That being said, the Dapper 3 has significantly better reaction times. Much, much better. But at this point, this ship isn't even really trying to get away. I don't think it can, frankly. Uh, that's pretty much it for them. Though, that said, the uh, the Dapper 3 did manage to take out its target a little bit faster. That could be down to the fact that its target was a little bit easier to destroy. Uh, slight repairs there on the Scarab. That's fine, though. Let's go ahead and salvage... Well, salvage the everything. While both of you... Do either of you need repairs? Uh, you need a little bit. One slight bit of armor damage there. And the Dapper 4, nothing to uh, to worry about there okay well let me get this fight salvaged and i'll make a couple more design adjustments before we move on to the next now as you can see we've gone for a little bit more of a redesign and the more more times i do any building on this the more it uh, seems to be moving away from the, the almost like shard like or perhaps even snowflake like uh, feeling to something somehow more avian i don't even know it's it's definitely got a tail now and 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 wings and, and it, yeah i i don't know i it's some sort of subconscious bias perhaps but uh i have swapped out the large engines no use for quick maneuvering quick combat adjustments i, I don't really need this to be able to cover great distances very quickly Ideally, I just wanted to be able to change direction and make micro adjustments in combat very quickly. And for that, I've slapped on two standard thrusters and two small thrusters, losing the large. So hopefully we're going to see the uh, Dapper 4 really come into its own in this combat. Let's uh, speed time up a little bit now. All right, the uh, Scarab should be making a beeline for the enemy. We're going to have our fighters peel off and get down here. Now you can really see the difference in speed there. However, larger crew comp complement, which is a bit of a, a bit of a problem. Now, let's have a quick look at you. Have you got anything I really dislike? You've got a flat cannon. Hmm. That would be capable of doing some damage to me. All right, well, this is going to be a proper test uh, then. So first and foremost, I want you to take that out. Secondly, I want you to take that out engage as normal fighters try and get in here without being utterly utterly destroyed ideally i would like you to engage from well within your weapons range but safe at the back you know what that's one thing i haven't been doing i've been been trying basically to rub the face of the fighters against the thing that i'm fighting and that is not the way to do it uh let's take these out on the way and then I want you to start wiping out these thrusters as you go. Uh, you, much the same. So Dapper 4, let's bring you in from your sort of maximum engagement range. Uh, somewhere around there. Well, not maximum, obviously, but uh, close enough. And once again, want you to burrow through these thrusters. We'll decide what we hit after that. But once we've uh, disabled the craft completely, that's the uh, main objective i want you to obviously be facing the opponent it does seem that the diagonal craft needs to be expressly told where to look a lot more than my other craft do right let's see if you can uh, remove those dangerous uh, components uh, you actually already had uh, now they are close enough that they are engaging uh, you've popped that i would kind of like to take care of the flak We've already lost our shields completely, thanks to those disruptors. So, go ahead. Oh, actually, that was the wrong uh, wrong vessel. You can uh, take out these. Which one am I controlling? I am... Yeah, there we are. Let's uh, wipe these out as you can. But, Scarab, pop the, the flak for now, then. Let's slow things down a little bit. Zoom out. Hopefully, we can get more energy into the shields. Shields are back online. That's good. And flak is gone. That's all I need. Did you did you completely destroy the craft? No, you didn't. Well done. <laughs> You've more or less neutered the craft, sure, but uh, I've barely been able to see what these ship, ships are doing. Well, ultimately, though, the only ship that ever gets to do any fighting is the Dapper Force. So I think that engine room is, in fact, a necessary component. At this stage, just go ahead and put it out of its misery, please. Uh, since you're the only one even remotely close enough to do it. There we go. 
Oh, no. You finally got here just as the fight was over. Well done. You'll get a consolation prize. All right. Increasingly, I'm starting to think of this less as a fighter and more as a, as a strike craft. It has grown significantly in size. The inclusion of the hyperdrive really does necessitate that, at least if I want to have the engine room. And I, I really do want to have the engine room. However, the increased travel time now from the reactor to the engine room is actually starting to cause us a bit of a bit of a problem. So I might need to reposition these components a little bit more. Uh, that in itself does pose some some problems, though. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how we're going to solve them, but let's see at least how this ship does in combat with the added space. If this does become ultimately just a strike craft, then I think we'll probably stray away from having two fighters for now, whilst our crew complements are still uh, a little bit tight, and instead have a single larger strike craft, and then eventually give it a, a twin. One thing I'm noticing now is that distance to the uh, engine room is actually causing the uh, Dapper 4 to run out of power more often than not. I still feel that this craft has low enough energy requirements that a single reactor is enough. It's just getting the energy from the reactor into the components that want it is the is the problem. We can solve that in two ways, either having more crew, which is a little bit more difficult for us, or improving the, uh, the travel times from source to destination. What I think we might need to do, as much as I'm worried about it, they send them in by themselves and just see which one gets the uh, gets the most damage. I think that is ultimately the only way to properly test out these craft. They aren't built to to fight alone, but I think that's really going to be the best the best indicator of which one is has the uh, better design. We'll have the the scarab nearby so it can offer support, so they they've got somewhere safe to retreat to. But it is now time to see how they fight now. Oh, interestingly, it's a defense platform. Uh, well, there's no point in me going against that, since that is pretty much the entire point of the Scarab's weapon systems, is that they can outrange stuff like that. Let's uh, not get too close, shall we? Let's go and find someone to fight, unless that's all that is in here. It might, unfortunately, be the case. Uh, yes, it does look that that is, in fact, the case. Okay, well, we'll pop all of these and uh, go and see if we can't find a bounty for these to fight. Yeah, we should be able to just up here. All right, bring you back in a second. Okay, there is the Renegade Pack. We may as well just do a couple of quick repairs while we're on the way. And let's get our ships into position. Hopefully... This won't go terribly, but it's always a possibility. Uh, that seems like one of the easier targets to take down, so uh, it looks like we've been given a bit of a buy there, but I suspect that it only wants to play with the Scarab, which we will allow for now. The Scarab can just uh, back off while the fighters move into position. However, this is going to be a real demonstration of whether they can actually maintain it or not. You're already out of power before the fight has even begun, which it is not because of the reactor. It's simply because of the, the, the low crew. Right, if you could get in there, please, and take them out right about there. And make sure you're facing them. There we are. In fact, let me just save that as... Uh, this should, I imagine save the attack defaults now th this is something that uh, perhaps i'm a little bit uh, late to realize but given that the crew save independently i have no reason to assume that that isn't also the case for the attack defaults for a ship because it would make sense for them to have different attack defaults now let's see which of you can actually do the the most damage well, I mean, realistically, they're armed in the same way, so as long as they're both within fi firing distance, they should be able to do more or less the same amount of damage. It's just which one is better at repositioning, and I'm constantly watching these engines going down. The, the power is down. You're managing your energy significantly better right now, with less crew, I might add, but you also don't have a, uh, a jump drive, that being said, because you're using a uh, capacitor, that's probably not uh, as necessary for you. So, hmm, for a moment there, the DPR four was the the clear kind of uh, leading the pack. But I think ultimately, unless I can give him more crew, I'm going to have to edge towards 
the DPR-3, which, although less capable, is at least doing its job. After some significant amounts of umming and ahhing over potential sacrifices to certain systems efficiency at getting, getting refueled, I think I've settled on something I like. I say, as I suddenly notice that this no longer has a way in, let me just fix that for you. Sorry, peeps. My bad, my bad. You can come on back inside. Uh, however, the way that this is now set up, we have enough crew quarters for up to 12 people on here. It's not that I want 12 people, it's just that it didn't seem to make sense not to use the double bunks if I was going to end up using that much space of single bunks to get the exact amount that I wanted, so this made more uh, more sense. It just means we've got room for spares. Uh, we have the uh, small hyperjump drive off the area here. Now, I'm going to have to have them... I'm not sure if I need a small storage in order to load this. Uh, let's actually see. Can I transfer the Hyperium resource across? Let's uh, get to upper four. Yes, I can. Okay, though, well, that's that's uh, wonderful. Let's go ahead and initiate that transfer then. Let's get that all the way across here just so that's ready to go. But loading it up with power is going to be uh, a bit more of a trek for them. Likewise, loading energy into the cockpit, a little bit more of a trek. But having this right next to the reactor is going to dramatically reduce the amount of time needed for them to get that loaded, which is the important one. And ultimately, once we've got more crew on board, I, this should uh, end up being a bit less of a problem. And on that note, how about we transfer maybe a few more crew over? We don't really have enough to, to do this uh, willy-nilly, but we'll move over to eight crew aboard. That should give this system pretty much everything it's going to need. At that point, we've got three people ready to move power whenever it's needed. Now, that is a far cry from the the, the minor five crew uh, aboard the, uh, the Dapper 3. So again, in terms of crew efficiency, this is significantly better. It's, it's got three less crew in total. But hopefully this now means that the Dapper 4 is at least going to be able to move around and I mean honestly the Dapper 4 does have a little bit more more style to to its setup. But with that let's uh, get over here for possibly the last fight of this episode. I'm not sure how many of the test flights we're going to include. There have been a lot of them at this point but we're now at least seeing that the, the Dapper 4 is no longer having any uh, thruster cutouts due to a lack of energy, which is very, very nice to see. Okay, finally time for us to put the uh, Dapper 3 and the Dapper 4 to work by themselves and see what comes of it. Now, again, they are not designed for solo operation, but let's just see what will happen if I tell them to just get involved. Now, this one has got a decent bit of firepower along the side, so let's uh, try and approach from the side. Uh, out of the view of that main cannon. We are fast enough that we should be able to get in there nice and close and hopefully take you down. Let's uh, set that save attack defaults, please and thank you. And you can more or less do the, the same on the other side, but uh, we're going to need to approach from about there, I'm going to say. That should be good enough. Now, your friend is on the way, so perhaps the uh, Scarab can get out there and exchange blows. Uh, let's see. How is the Dapper 4 doing? Now, i got to be aware of the enemy approaching from that side. Yep, they are on the way. And unfortunately, uh, we fight at the Dapper 3 in a bit of a pickle because it is going to have to tangle with an enemy cannon by itself. Let's, uh, let's approach from over here. Right, Scarab gonna need you to help out here. This has grown a little bit too dangerous. Some chonky blows already, but the Scarab has proven the more serious threat and our enemies decided to change target, which is going to give the Dapper 3 the perfect opportunity to sneak in behind and take out that cockpit. Let's see, how about you? Getting this cockpit is going to be a very tricky proposition, especially if it can outmaneuver you, which it might be able to, honestly. 
you have almost no ability to slow down, so how about we just go around instead? Something like that. Let's go, though I'm presenting the cockpit to it. There we are. A bit of jousting, never hurt anyone. Uh, there we are, that, that'll do. Like You can immediately spin if you would be so kind. How are we doing over here? How much damage did you take? A little bit of damage to the nose, but nothing too serious. But we have absolutely outmaneuvered our enemy over here. I think they're, they're turning attention to the Scarab, but that was actually fantastic work by the uh, DPR4. Despite being full frontal with the uh, cannon there, we managed to just skim straight past and deal the killing blow from behind, which is exactly what I want out of my fighters. And there we go, the Dapper 3 and the Dapper 4, and a bite for scale. The, the, the bit of combat damage as fine. Healthy scar just lets people know that you're not afraid to get some work done. But uh, do let me know down in the comments below which of the two fighter designs you like the most and why. We haven't really done much redesigning of the Dapper 3 because honestly, for what it was designed to do, it's more or less perfect as it is. But it does have one glaring omission out of its abilities and that is the ability to jump. So it, there would be a need to do a little bit of a redesign no matter what but uh, do let me know what your thoughts are and indeed if you are familiar with the game and you have any advice on how we could further improve the fighters then don't be shy but that is going to be it for us for today i hope you have enjoyed i'm going to give up saying oh yeah the next episode is not going to be as build heavy it's a game about building i'm, I'm just going to embrace that though uh, i imagine we're going to start seeing some very different opponents in the next sector as uh, it is going to be a bump up in difficulty, so there'll likely be a bit of a focus on base bashing there as well. And finally, we'll get some more crew, but that will all have to wait for the next episode. So until next time, and as ever, do leave a like if you liked and sub if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next one. Do take care, everyone. <laughs>